All right, am I actually broadcasting now? Fantastic, it looks like. Um, cool. So, uh, basically I had a half an hour free today and uh, I wanted to spend it with you lot. And uh, I'm basically just going to be spending it spinning out in my backyard. Yeah? Um, yep, I, I had some luck with this format on Tuesday when I was uh, at a studio and I thought I would try it out in my backyard where I actually have Wi-Fi access, yeah? So, those of you guys who are watching from home, if uh, you're digging on the stuff that I'm doing, you can feel free to ask me questions, make comments, etc. Uh, impossible moves you want me to try out, because sometimes they're not so impossible. Either which way, let me know, and uh, I will be happy to give it a shot. Uh, a couple things I've been working on lately that you guys might find interesting are cleaning up isolation versus this kind of uh, six-petal gunslinger flower right here. Like, yeah. Which has been an interesting challenge. Um, and depending upon the length of the poi, it can either be a huge challenge or not so huge challenge. But uh, I think it looks a lot cooler when there's a relationship between uh, the poi heads and, uh, and uh, the, the hand as it's turning around and everything. So that's one thing I'm working on. The other thing I've been working on lately is uh, just drills of getting into gunslingers, like trying to do one, two, and then keep it going as, uh, as a set of flowers, like Nya. Uh, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. That time I got it, and then trying to make the exit, which does not always happen. But uh, the other entrance being, whoop, this one right here. There we go. That wasn't so bad. And then trying to exit back out of it, right? Um, that and uh, one other thing has been just playing around with uh, doing gunslinger spiral wraps and stopping them and seeing if I can continue on doing that back and forth. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff. Uh, and let me pull up the comments here so I can see what, if anything, y'all have been uh, y'all have been saying which it doesn't appear as though anything has been said yet so if you guys have anything you'd like to ask or say please let me know um, and aside from that I will probably just jam out and spin uh, Wi-Fi has been kind of sketchy so the picture might be a little blocky and not coming through as well as it could but uh, yeah Uh, for those of you guys who haven't seen it yet, I had a video that went live earlier today on how to incorporate volume into your poi spinning and making sure that you're keeping your hands and everything separate in order to, uh, in order to fill your, the space up around your body as much as possible because it's really common for people to work with like T-Rex arms and everything when they're spinning and working from a place where you're trying to take up as much space as possible is a lot more visually dynamic and interesting. So, if you haven't already, you should, uh, you should definitely check out that video, my friends. Ah, <sighs> cool, cool. So... Do you know Gojira? Uh, no, I don't know Gojira. <laughs> um, as in Godzilla? Yeah, I've, I've never seen the original movie. Hi, from, hi, hi to the person who's saying hi from Germany, by the way. Um, one thing I'm gonna do real quick is last time I did this, I found that it was really effective for me to be on um, my iPad watching the stream at the same time as comments came in, because otherwise they tend to flick up on the screen and then disappear almost immediately. So let me do that right quick. and uh, see if I can get a better handle on these comments because the native YouTube app is not great for this, unfortunately. Um. Cool, and Dan HPP says, all good sound and picture-wise here in Germany. Fantastic, that's great news. Uh, hello in Germany, by the way. It's gotta be, 
got to be fairly late right there uh, right now, yeah, at least after dark. So thank you for tuning in, and uh, hopefully this is something fun to watch after the close of your workday. Um, yeah, so as I was saying before, lately I've been putting a lot of work into kind of cleaning up these Gunslinger uh, anti-brids and trying to make sure that I keep a really clear and defined relationship between the, uh, the gunslinger flower and uh, the isolating hand. Because as it turns out, when I was originally doing this, uh, I was doing it as a gunslinger versus static spin. And you have to reach really, really far with the gunslinger flower in order to make those match up. It's so much easier to do it against an isolation. So I do recommend the isolation. You can easily get into that if you want to by uh, getting into a four pedal anti spin Ooh. versus uh, gunslinger flower like so, and then switch into isolation versus gunslinger over on your non-native side. Non-native to the gunslinger, that is. And keep that up as long as you can. Ah! Almost 10 here, just a beginner and trying to get in spiral wraps for now. Spiral wraps, yes, spiral wraps are awesome. Um, so the key with spiral wraps is like, there's this little flick that you have to do with your hands, like right as the poi finish wrapping up. You see how I'm kind of like, you know, just kind of kicking my wrists back just a second as they, uh, as they come to a close. Um, when I first learned how to do spiral wraps, the way I did it was I actually pulled my hands apart like this, which um, it worked for getting me the initial work down and everything, but at the same time, number one, it like will chew up your hands because there's a lot of friction there. Uh, and number two, it's not the most efficient way to do it. It requires a lot of hand strength. So, yeah, see if you can get it to the point where you can just do it with that wrist flick right there. Uh, Nick Woolsey said that in his Spiral Wraps video ages ago, and I didn't understand it for the longest time. And then once I finally did, it was like, oh, so that's the key right there. <laughs> uh, you can do it over your head by turning and stopping your entire body. Yeah, um, that's actually something I picked up from... Uh, Nikki Evers a while back is you can integrate that. Let me step back so you can see more, more of my body. You can integrate that into uh, like a pirouette uh, and kind of force the movement back around the other way, which I think is really cool. We don't do nearly enough horizontal plane stuff. So um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend that as a way to uh, attack that particular problem. Um, but yeah. comment. Hello from Flagstaff, Arizona. Hi Flagstaff. The other day when you went live, oop, the other day when you went live, you briefly touched on vertical stacking. Could you explain, demonstrate more stacking? Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so basically stacking comes in one of two species. Let me angle the camera down just slightly here so I don't have to walk quite as far back for you to see what I'm doing. Um, so um, the essence of vertical stacking really comes down to these, which are uh, pendulum stalls. And the idea being that as the poi swings back and forth like this, you execute a little part of a point isolation to bring your hand over directly on top of it, right? And that stops it from moving. And it's also just a really cool moment. And one of the, re one of the things that like contact poi are really good for, and one of the reasons that like uh, when Ronis first started playing with them, um, he really came up with a style that emphasized the use of that ball as like a point in space to focus attention on. So you, you, when you're dealing with vertical stacking, you're really looking at situations where you're initiating pendulum stalls over to either side of your body and letting them drop down like so. Or like working with anti-spins and adding in a pendulum stall on the top of them. You can also do it with an in-spin stall. But yeah, this is the kind of thing that I never see anybody play with anymore. And it's really a shame because it looks really cool. Um, horizontal stacking, of course, has nothing whatsoever to do with point isolations, but just uh, top stalls that have been timed uh, along with pendulums to coincide and make interesting lines happen. Um, the two examples that I nearly always see that I, I think are really cool are this, which is 
Um, something that Charlie showed me at Wildfire once upon a time. I'm sure other people did it before that, but Charlie was the first one to show it to me. And of course, the stack that Mel first showed off in his Red Pants video, that first made everybody go like, oh, this is a horizontal stack and it's a thing, which is really funny because I don't think that Mel intended for it to be a thing. He just was playing around with staggered stalls and that was one of the things that came out of it. Um, so yeah, vertical, uh, vertical stacking is built around uh, those kind of pendulum stalls and uh, horizontal stacking is built around top stalls and pendulums and just getting the timing right, yeah? Oh, there's a whole bunch of comments that have been put out there since then. Um, da -da -da. At the moment I'm going in from a weave, almost worse than that every time. Um, you're talking about the spiral wrap still? Yeah, so one, one of those things that's gonna help is like, if you've got your waist wraps down, you know how you can like open up when you're going from forwards weave to reverse weave like this? Um, when you open up like that, use that to start going into the spiral wrap. Um, and you're, you're gonna find out really quick if your planes are clean or not. If your planes are not clean, it's gonna be a kind of, it, it's gonna not work for you, but getting that down will help clean up your planes for sure. Um, let's see here. Howley Mello says, hey Drex, loving the gunslinger work. I noticed there isn't a whole lot of floor plane in your spinning. Do you ever incorporate toroidal spinning into flow? Um, I think there's actually quite a lot of floor spinning in, in, in my flow. Uh, I've been doing a lot of kind of like popping in and out of horizontal planes from pendulum versus uh, triquetra or uh, this is a great body tracer horizontal plane switch that uh, I got from Nikki Evers a while back. Um, toroids I don't do as much anymore, um, partially just because it's, it's one of these things that it's going to require some time to get the planes like super duper clean. I've been seeing a lot more 3D stuff lately that's been um, impressing me in terms of how clean and how cool looking it is. So I may take that up at, uh, at, at, at some point in the near future. Um, Bow Juggler says, hello from France. Hi there, France. You've got to be pretty late at night too. Um, James McGlory, greetings from Georgia. Hi, Georgia. Uh, love your tutorials and skill. Thank you. I'm, uh, thank you for watching them. I appreciate it. Um, Haley Mello, you can also gunsling that stack. Now that's an interesting idea. Um, so I don't know what it is you've got set in your head, but the immediate thing that dawns on me to do with that then is gunsling, come out like that, I don't know. I don't know if that's what you're, if, if that's really what you're uh, on about, but um, yeah, the, the challenge with gunslingers always is that like, they're so short and so quick that stalls are like either not happening or really difficult or they have to go really, really quickly. So I'm not exactly sure what gunslingers would look like integrated. Uh, oh, that's what you were thinking of. Cool. Yes, you can do gunslingers to get on there. Uh, it's going to be complicated, though. Um, da -da 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 -da. Devlin Matthews says, so, dude. Hi, how's it going? Uh, thanks for that tip, Dan HPP. You're welcome. Hello from Portland, so, says uh, 12 soccer dude e 21 Hi, how's it going? You've taught me so much. Yay, I'm glad to hear that. Um, Haley Mello, I use the unwrap to end at the top. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense then. Because, uh, man, so there, there's another move with gunslingers that is next. So right now, the thing that I'm really working on with gunslingers is doing spiral wrap flowers like these, um, which these just, like, turn your forearm muscles from, like, fresh dough into solid steel. It's ridiculous. How much, uh, how much work it takes from your forearms to make that shit work. Um, but the next thing after that probably is going to be, um, you know, Gunslinger 1.5s. Because I do like the look of them, but I think, like, my, my usual approach to doing Gunslingers, which is the cryptic entry, takes uh, a beat too long to do with the 1.5s. So I think what it winds up having to be is going back to the kind of, woo, uh, is going back to the slide entry and exit in order to make that work, which I haven't been playing with very much and I probably should have, <laughs> don't you know? Um, let's see here. James McGlory says, George again, great timing on the live tutorial. I was just hitting a park to spin 
McCoy. Thanks so very much. Man, I'm going to enjoy this. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Um, Lisa W. Hi from Houston. Hello. How's things going in Texas? Just a novice, but your tutorials are amazing. Glad to hear it. Um, if you have anything specifically you'd like to see in those tutorials, please let me know in the comments or anything. If any of you guys are working on things right now that you've had a difficult time with and would like some pointers or uh, just a quick, hey, I got stuck here and how do I get unstuck? I'm, I'm more than happy to do that right here. Um, also, just so you guys know, I'm only planning on being on for a total of a half an hour, so about 15 minutes more, uh, just because you're getting me in between a lot of different things right now. Um, Gunslinger is so addictive. I know, right? Uh, hello from Pennsylvania. Thanks for all you've done to the art form, Drex. Oh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, Colin Briggs, Zans Diamond. Um, so I have many, many, many detailed tutorials on how to do Zans Diamond. The, 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 the basic overall thing you want to look for is, in my head, I memorize what I kind of think of as being like a video game cheat code and a series of directions where I go up, left, right, up, down, right, left, down and I just remember to take my hand through those positions, right? And that gets me the pattern. Now things get a lot more interesting when you get your other hand involved in it um, because it either has to be doing a similar kind of pattern at the same time or you can have them working in opposites, something like this. And I will confess that like adding the other poi into this I have a theory now that like um, every time you add an additional poi into any trick that you're doing, it doesn't like uh, make the difficulty of the trick increase in linear f uh, fashion. It increases in exponential fashion. So it's vastly harder to do Zan's diamond with two poi than it is just with one. And of course, doing it with three or four poi is like crazy difficult. Um, but what I'll tell you is um, I, I did an entire series uh, on linear extensions a while back that goes super deep in depth on how you put together Zan's diamond in all the different timing and direction combinations. So I will tell you, go check that out because um, that is going to be, uh, that, 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 that will help you out more than I can in, in the course of this video because Essentially, I'm just gonna re-explain everything that's in that video. I don't have a better way of teaching it just yet. Um, Dan HPP says, keep up the good work. Cool, looking forward to more great content from you. So am I. Um, what is the most mind-fucking poi trick for you? Ooh, um, I th honestly, I think Gunslingers is it. Like, uh, the, I avoided learning these for the longest time because I remember looking at him and just knowing that it was going to be like, you know, this is a deep rabbit hole and it's going to take a long time to learn. And it did. Um, it was about three months of extremely diligent practice before I could do, I could even begin to do the things with them that I wanted to. And I'm still such a long way from like really having them integrated into everything that I'm able to do in a way that just feels effortless and easy. Like, you know, at this point, it still takes some effort for me to say like do a horizontal cat eye versus isolation but I can bust this out and be reasonably confident that it's going to come out looking the way I want it to look. Uh, gunslingers I am still a long long way away from that with so I think gunslingers are the last thing that were a real mind fuck for me. Um, Drew Cotto, what is the hardest poetry trick you can do? I mean honestly I think I think at this point, like the hardest poi trick I can do is either going to be this horizontal cat eye versus isolation, um, simply because horizontal cat eyes are really, really hard in and of themselves. But like synchronizing them with an isolation, number one, it cleans up the horizontal cat eye in such a way that if you were at all BSing it before, then you're just screwed at this point. There, there's absolutely no way to do this move and continue to, uh, to do it the wrong way because it becomes instantly obvious to your audience. And in that spirit, of course, like the isolation versus uh, six pedal gunslinger flower right now is something that's really driving me bonkers because, well, it's not really driving me bonkers. I've, I've had a lot of success with it this week. Um, part of that is just that uh, keeping all the planes clean in this. Let me give you a side view of this because it's totally nuts. Like 
the gunslinger requires so much room in order to stay on path, and you have to be so careful not to let the isolation poi cross into any place that the gunslinger goes to, because it just, uh, they'll tangle like that. It's, it, 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 it happens so quickly and so easily. Um, James McLaurie. Hey, Georgia Jim again. Sorry about hugging all your time since you asked about having, dif uh, having difficulty having three beat weave. Um, I'm not sure what you mean there. I'm sorry. Uh, Drew Coddle. So you're saying that I should buy poi. Yes, absolutely you should. Um, Anthony T says, Drex, you're one of my favorite spinners. I'm having an issue with polyrhythm, specifically where you're alternating which hand is extending in an anti-spin flower versus extension in wall plane. Um, okay, so I, I, I assume you're talking about like the Mercedes. So the basically at the top, think of it as being which hand is further away from you. So at the top, your extension hand is gonna be further away. At the bottom right, your extension hand is gonna be further away. And at the bottom uh, right down here, your uh, anti-spin hand is gonna be further away. Now let me verify that I did not just mess you up on that. Nope, it's the other way around, my bad. Okay, so it's going to be uh, anti-spins in front on top, anti-spins on front in uh, the lower left, and extension is in front on the lower right. So think. Uh, so since my right hand is doing the anti-spin, I'm thinking of this as being right, right, left, right, left, right, 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 yeah? Which, I mean, it, it should be that way with a flower anyway, where on this side the left hand is going to be closer to you, and on this side the right hand is going to be closer to you. And you just have to figure out which is going to be in front on the top. And I usually prefer to have the anti-spin hand in front on the top. I'm curious if I can do it. Oh, no, no. No to the anti-spin hand behind on top. Yeah. I hope that helps. Um, isolation with the gunslinger. So good. Yay. I'm proud of that myself. Hello from Chile. Hi there, Chile. South America. You're one of the best spinning. Oh, thank you. I, uh... I appreciate that. There's a lot of people that I enjoy seeing spin. So, um, let's see here, Jay, when can you show what exactly is an inversion with poi? Uh, no, I can't because no two people can seem to agree on what the definition of it is. Um, so, in theory, inversions come from a document that a guy named Rev wrote way back in the day. And he describes an inversion as any point at which you have two subsequent inswings. That is, two subsequent moments where the poi both rotate in that space between your arms and your body. So technically speaking, according to Rev, this would be an inspin. Um, or that would be an inspin, you know? Um, so what we sometimes call uh, inversions are um, like these barrel rolls right here which still meet the definition that Rev set out, but Rev's definition is both more restrictive and less restrictive than you might think. Um, so for the purposes of clarity, I usually just generically refer to inside moves as being inversions and then add more detail when needed. So this is a barrel roll, you know? This is a love lace. Uh, this is an introversion and just generically think of all those as being different kind of variants on uh, on inversions. Yeah, um, like the the bitch of it is is that way back in the day, Rev actually had videos that accompanied his uh, his manifesto, and the problem is is that those videos have now been I think pretty much lost to us, and so without those videos, it can be tough to figure out what exactly he's talking about in his manifesto, which is a really really wonderfully documented. Uh, account of the stuff that he was working on, but without the video, it's really difficult to parse. Anyway, um, how about body tracing? Um, so, when it comes to body tracing, uh, Leo Ikaza and uh, and Dave Static have really done a great job of breaking this down. Also, cryptic. You can think of it as being that, like, there's there's essentially a series of cavities around your body from, like, elbow, shoulder, head, 
your other shoulder, so on and so forth. And just to like practice doing reels at each of those spots, both top and bottom. And then to uh, just basically practice moving back, ooh, moving back and forth between all those points and seeing where that takes you. Um, and like basically if you can do that, there's absolutely no body tracer in the world that you cannot do. Next up, um, any new flower variations? Uh, just the gunslinger stuff that I was showing earlier. Um, would you consider some meteor tutorials? Yeah, actually I've, I've done a bunch of meteor tutorials. Um, I actually was gonna do, I was gonna update my meteor tutorials before I did the gunslinger series and then I realized that the Meteor series would wind up being like six or seven videos, and the Gunslinger series I could wrap up in four. So I went with the Gunslinger series instead, but I, I might come back to do the uh, Meteor series at some point. Um, even though they're similar to Gunslingers, they end up being quite different. Yes, I agree. Um, there are almost new tutorials. On, well, there are no Puppy Hammer tutorials, but if you look, there, there are a few Meteor tutorials. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I have a Meteor 2. One minute tutorial, please. That intro version weave thing okay yeah i can do that one minute tutorial on that um meter can be, can be quite amazing as any flow art but there are a lot less people doing it well yes and no i mean there are plenty of people who are doing like three poi and by extension they're doing meteor stuff in there but um yeah anyway uh when you find the right balance it's amazing yes it is no and like just playing around with meteor is really fun especially because like i knew plenty of guys that did this back in the day and I like never thought anything of it, so I never asked them like for any information on how they were doing it. And now I kind of wish that I had. Um, like there was a guy, uh, D. DeCaro, that I knew in New York City when I lived there 10 years ago, who, uh, you know, his whole thing was, uh, was, was doing media. I learned a few poi tricks from him as well, but I wish now that I'd picked up more media from him when I got the chance. But so it goes. Um, other great resources for Meteor stuff, um, look up any old video of Andy House uh, doing his stuff back in the day. That man is just an absolute beast, and uh, yeah, he's, he's still around and kicking. I think uh, I think he taught a class at Ignite, but I'm not sure about that. But, uh, really, really smart guy, yeah. Let's see if there's anything else that's been posted, and at this point, I have like less than five minutes um, speaking of Puppy Hammer, I just barely purchased my own. What are your thoughts on the prop? Um, Puppy Hammer, like, I think Puppy Hammer looks cool, but it's not something I've, I've really ever want to learn how to do. Um, so, the, uh, Charlie Cushing, the guy who created the Puppy Hammer and also uh, created Lantern Smith, um, he and I are actually really, really good friends. And what happens every couple years is we'll have this thing where he'll try and get me to spin Puppy Hammer and then I'll be like, okay, cool, so how about you try and learn some Contact Poi then? Because like the two things are basically opposites. You cannot do Contact Poi with a Puppy Hammer and you can't do Puppy Hammer while doing Contact Rolls, you know? Um, so we each kind of go to our own little corner for like 10 minutes and try them out and we both come back and we're both just like, nope, nope, I'm sticking with what I got. So I appreciate Puppy Hammer, but I've just never had the inclination to learn it. Um... I love how when he's just chilling and sp oh, I mean yeah, th this at, at this point like so much of this is integrated into muscle memory for me, and I you know I've taught so many classes on how to do it and everything that moving and speaking with it at the same time is really it, it's it's not a big deal for me. It just it engages different circuits in the brain. You know, the one thing that I do occasionally have problems with when when I teach is. Uh, like when I'm giving people instructions, I always mirror the class. Uh, part of the reason for that is that I don't like turning my back to the class, and part of the reason is that uh, it gets me better because I have to then execute all of my tricks with my non-dominant hand, which is really good practice. Um, but like calling out my left, which is always going to be the audience's right, versus you know my right and everything, that messes with me. That messes with me something fierce. So, yeah, it's uh, learn how to become a, become a teacher and teach lots of classes. That's how that happens. 
Um, peace later, gonna open a cold one with the boys. Cool, I'm right behind you there. Um, what do you think is the best mental attitude to learn and master tricks? Attention, dedication, focus, persistence. Um, some combination of all of these things. I mean, the, the thing is, like, you have to figure out what strategy works best for you. The thing that I found really, really helped me out, especially in the early days of spinning poi, was, uh, and I, I did an essay on this that I put on my website, I might, like, repost it as a video, but essentially I did, uh, I, I started doing something that I now recall proxy goals, where, like, you know, my, my goal in my first year of spinning uh, started to be um, recording a video of the new tricks and stuff that I had learned every week. This is how my tech blog started up. It was actually one of the reasons that I did it was to give me a reason to keep on practicing. And it's one of those things, it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to record my video this week. I haven't learned anything new. I'd better get to practicing, so I've got something new to show. Um, and in that way, the real goal, of course, was to get better at poi and to learn more tricks. But having that little thing to motivate me was really helpful. Um, I first started doing things that way back in college. Uh, I wanted to be a musician and a songwriter at the time. And what I would do is I would write a poem every day and I would post it on the door of uh, a young woman who lived down the hall from me. And uh, poor thing, she totally thought that this was like me being a stalker or something. Like, I'm gonna post a poem on your door every day. And really, it, like, it could have been anyone. It didn't matter who it was. It was just like, you, I'm gonna post a poem on your day, on, on, on your door. Um, and that's what kept me writing every day. So I used the same technique when I started learning poi and it helped out a lot. So that same thing might help for you. Like, be all like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post a video every week to Instagram or to YouTube or what have you, and I have to have something new to show. And I can tell you that it helps out a lot in keeping motivation up. Um, but yeah, aside from that, it's just like, you know, you, you have to be willing to sit down and work on something that doesn't seem like it is very rewarding for a long, long time before it does become rewarding. Um, like, you know, the, this is an exercise I've been doing a lot the past few days of like just doing a spiral wrap with a gunslinger that stops and then switching direction on it and switching direction on it and switching direction on it. And I've been trying to do this so that I can do it 10 times in a row with both hands, right? And I'm not even joking. I will sit down and I will do this for like 40 or 50 minutes solid before I get to my 10. And um, it's just, you know, it, for my brain that works. Um, and the thing is, is that like, you know, probably about 20 or 30 minutes into that, like my brain starts getting super zen and being able to focus on it and everything. So, I mean, I find that the practice itself is the reward after a while. That's a really, really long answer to a simple question. I hope that's okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. And I am, oh, I'm a little bit over time, but I will answer the last questions that are currently posted. Um, three beat weave perplexes me. Um, so here, here is my way that anybody can get the three beat weave. Um, and it's kind of like, the middle steps are kind of painful, but I, th this method will work no matter who you are and no matter what you're trying to do. Uh, and that's to start with your arms open on your left hand side, and you're gonna spin around so that you get your left hand on top. You turn over to the right hand side of your body, and you spin your arms around until you get your right hand on top. Go over to the left side of your body, spin around until you get your left hand on top. Back over to the right, spin around until you get the right hand on top. Now, if that's feeling pretty comfortable, what you do after that is the hand that's on top stays spinning. So when I bring my left hand around on top, I'm gonna keep it spinning on the other side of my body. When I turn around to unwrap my hands, it's my right hand that stays spinning. I turn over to the left, bring my left hand on top, it keeps spinning. Turn around to the right, my right hand comes on top, it keeps spinning. Now, count down three beats on this each time you turn. So it becomes one, two, three, and switch. One, two, three and switch, one, two, three and switch, then one, two and switch, one, two and switch, one, two and switch, and then one, 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 one. When you get down to the ones, you have the three beat weave. Yeah. And that is like my nuclear option for teaching the three beat weave to people. Um, Good advice, I think passion makes for the extra shine in my art. Excellent. Uh, thanks for time, taking the time out of your day to do this, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, thank you for watching. Um, 
Do you focus on a specific diet or don't you care about food? In my opinion, the way you eat has, um, I'm, 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 I'm not a, I'm not a big foodie, honestly. Um, so part of it is for me is, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a really, really tall person. I'm like six foot one and, um, being the size that I am and being hugely active, I eat a lot of food and, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it, like the amount of calories that it takes to keep me going every day, I, I don't even care what they are. You know, it's um, and I probably should a little bit more. It's it's not like I feel unhealthy or anything like that, but I know a lot of people are super into their diet. Um, I'm not one of them. I, I to be perfectly honest with you, I care more about like the stuff that I read and the information that comes into me than I do the uh, the nutritional stuff that comes into me, which. My, my my girlfriend uh, is very very hardcore into food, so I'm I'm sure that as time goes on that will change. But uh, yeah, it's 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 not something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Cool, and I think that I am going to have to wrap it up here. But thanks to all you guys who uh, who are out there and watching and uh, ask me awesome questions. I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. Um, and I will see you very, very soon. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace.